I'm Alyssa Ford Morrell here today to talk about invasive plants. Invasive plants are not actually the plants that annoy you so much in your garden by spreading where you don't want them. Instead, invasive plants have a very strict definition that was laid out in 1999 in an executive order that was signed by President Bill Clinton, order number 13112, and amended later by President Obama. And it says that an invasive plant must be a plant that is non-native to where it is occurring and capable of escaping cultivation and reproducing in the wild in a manner that causes harm, harm to human health, to the economy, or potentially to the environment. Most of the invasive plants that we talk about are harmful to the environment. We're here looking at Nandita domestica. This is a very popular plant in America. It was introduced to our country in 1804 and has been selling wildly in the nursery trade ever since. It has these beautiful red berries in the winter and it's evergreen. So it's really attractive. It's no wonder that it's popular. Unfortunately, the red berries have been shown to be toxic to birds and other animals if they are eaten in great quantity. A few berries are okay for the birds, but um, any bird that's particularly hungry and eats a lot runs a health risk by eating them. Nandina spreads by rhizomes and by the birds eating the berries and pooping them out somewhere else. Uh, it can be removed by cutting it down and using an herbicide on it or by digging it out. Digging it out is a great, great way to go if you can manage to get all those roots out. You don't want to leave parts of the roots or they could regrow. Fortunately, we do have some great choices to replace it. One of the plants that I like to recommend as a replacement for the Nandina is a red twig dogwood. We're here at the Glen Carlin Library Garden where we had a Nandina for a number of years and several years ago decided it had to go. And we decided to get the red twig dogwood in part because it does offer the wonderful winter interest of the red twigs which show really clearly after the leaves have dropped. So it's a very attractive and similarly sized to some of the more mature tall Nandinas. Um, this is not locally native, but it is native in the Northeast area. So uh, it's certainly not going to be an invasive here. The next shrub I'd like to recommend is Euonymus americanus, which has beautiful fall colors, very similar to Nandina. It has these wonderful little flowers in the spring, and in the fall, these great berries, which give rise to the two common names, strawberry bush and hearts of Buston. One quick word of warning about Euonymus americanus, it is deer candy. If you have a lot of deer browse in your yard, it's probably not the shrub for you. But if you don't, please do consider planting it because it is struggling to survive in the wild because of all the deer browse. The last shrub I'd like to recommend is Itea virginica, a great native shrub that takes a wide range of conditions. I'm particularly recommending it to replace small Nandina because Itea has several small cultivars that make a great substitute. I hope this information is helpful to you as you look at replacing Nandina domestica. Happy gardening!